Field trials are for gun dogs, which are judged on their ability to retrieve. And there's also working trials, which are similar to obedience shows, but demand greater intelligence and stamina on the part of the dog. Best in show is the Irish Wolfhound. <laughs> Exemption shows, like this one, often held at fates or bazaars, attract many owners who may have tremendous pride in their dog's appearance, or who enter because they think their dog, which may or may not be purebred, has some particularly appealing feature which entitles it to enter a novelty class. Class number seven, the dog with the waggiest tail. Come along, we want to see all these tails are wagging. Such dogs don't have to be registered with the Kennel Club. Open and championship shows, for which competition is very keen, are attended by those who have chosen or bred their dog specifically for showing purposes. None of these can be more seriously or closely contended than crufts, where only the very best can appear. Thank you, ma'am. The best way to find out what crufts is really about is to talk to an expert. Mrs. Cathy Sutton is a very highly respected judge. Mrs. Sutton, I've just watched you ju judging one of the Dandy Did Terrier yeah. sections. What exactly were you and all the judges looking for? Well, we looked for standards that are set to us by the breed clubs and by the kennel club. And we have to go by these standards. Uh, for instance, you know, a dandy is a fairly big eye, a lovely eye, actually, a charming expression. And it's got this rather roach over the loin, which is unusual and not common to other breeds. And these are in the standards, so these they must have. And they, those have to be rigidly adhered to, don't Oh, they? yes. Oh, yes. The, the standards are guidelines for us, but, you know, we're supposed to know them all. There's about 260 of them, so you see. And are those standards generally reformed every year? Once they're set, they're set for quite a lot of years. But at this moment, they're going through a bit of a, you know, changing, not so much changing the standard, but trying to bring in a better English, perhaps, you know, if we can. <laughs> What does it mean to the people who are here at Crufts? Uh, well, it means an awful lot of different things, doesn't it? You know, for the exhibitor, they want to win. For the judge, it's a very great compliment to be invited here to judge. And for the spectators, you have a lot of spectators here from abroad, and they want to come and look at our good dogs, because we do produce good dogs. And what about ordinary people? Uh, there's nobody ordinary here. They're all dog <laughs> mad, aren't they? They wouldn't be here. So generally, what would you put the incentive down to? I think if you're a breeder, you're a breeder and you want to show off what you've bred. One's conceited enough to be able to think that, well, I've done this, look, it's damn good, and you want to show it off. I think breeders feel like that. So much for the people. What about the dogs? What do you think they feel? Oh, golly, I don't know. Some of them love it. You know, this is explained by taking out an old champion that hasn't been out for a bit, and they are thrilled to go out again. They're really thrilled. They love it. A dog that loves the show ring wants to come, and a dog that doesn't is just hopeless. I've had them both ways. And a show's fate, you know, if you call something gaiety or, or happy, it's as miserable as sin when you take it to a show. So names are very important. What sort of time, effort and money goes into exhi exhibiting a dog here? Oh, an awful lot of time, an awful lot of money and an awful lot of effort. A lot of disappointments and a lot of great pleasure. What about the rewards? I mean, what's the level of prize money that you could, oh, for no. instance, win? You know, prize money is nothing. It's two or three pounds. It's nothing to the value of the dog. But if you win a very high award here, either you can sell your dog, or it's worth that as a brood bitch, or it's worth an awful lot more as a stunt dog. So, as Cathy says, if you were the owner of a champion dog or bitch, then the rewards in the forms of breeding fees and stud fees could in the long term be quite substantial. But what of those of you who want to breed from a bitch on a purely amateur basis, say to produce another dog to replace an old dog, or those of you who want to know how to handle your bitch when she's in season? Right, Andrew, taking it from the start, you, you've got a bitch, 
and it's going to come into season. So what's the first thing you do? Well, I think the first thing you want to do is to really decide whether you want to have a litter of puppies from your bridge, whether you can afford the time and the uh, effort and the energy that it really takes. You've got to think about it fairly carefully first, I think. And probably the best thing to do is to go to the breeder that you got the bitch from in the first place uh, and ask their advice. Uh, if they've got a stud dog or if they know of a suitable stud dog to uh, put yours to. And then uh, when she does come into season, you can make arrangements to have a mated with that particular dog. But what about if you've got a mongrel, not a pedigree, but you still wanted to breed a litter from that? Uh, mongrels, of course, uh, you, you simply don't know what they're going to turn into. Uh, the best plan would probably be to try and find a dog that is most like the sort of dog that you've got. But it's a very much more chancy business if you do that. Anyway, mongrel or pedigree, once you've decided to uh, find a mate for them or choose a mate, uh, you've then got to know when they come into season. So what do you look out for? Well, they start coming into season normally when they're about six months old. The first season is when they're about six months. It's a little bit later than that with bigger dogs. Then they come into season about uh, six, nine month intervals, twice a year, roughly, round about twice a year. And it normally lasts about three weeks. How can you tell? That sounds a ridiculous question, but how do you tell well, before it's too late? A lot of things start happening when they come into season. They, they start swelling up uh, around the genital area there's a certain amount of swelling there, and that'll be pretty obvious. And then there's uh, a sticky discharge. First discharges that the bitch passes are very sticky, and then it becomes very blood-stained. The whole thing lasts about three weeks. Is there a big personality change in the bitch? Yes, there is indeed, yes. They, they start behaving quite differently when they're in season, and normally quite an obedient bitch may well become, uh, well, want to go out and really do the town and, and go out in search of a dog. So, Mother Nature's rather stronger than us. At that time, yes. So, assuming then that your bitch has been successfully mated, and she's now pregnant, what sort of care do you have to take of her during her pregnancy? Well, I think the best thing is to really start making preparations right at the beginning. Clearly you want a, uh, some sort of box for her to have her litter in, something big enough for her to turn around in, and preferably not a not a circular basket, something like this, in fact. And what do you put in it? Well, here we've got shredded paper, but newspaper's just as good. There isn't really anything better than ordinary newspaper. So start collecting newspapers. If she's a long-haired bitch, then try and keep her tidy at the, at the back end. And it's probably a good idea to worm her round about five or six weeks into pregnancy. And how long is the term of pregnancy? Well, it lasts nine weeks normally, that's 63 days. It can go on a bit longer than that. It's not abnormal, it's not wrong for it to go on a few days more than that. Any more than a few days, should you contact your vet? Well, when the 63 days is up, the first thing to do is to check the date that she was mated on, because uh, people have made mistakes like that in the past. Uh, after that, then see what her behavior is like. If she's eating and, and romping around and being quite normal, uh, then there isn't really very much to worry about, but you need to keep a pretty close eye on her. Or if she looks very ill or uncomfortable, then you want to get veterinary attention right away. Is the bitch automatically going to have her puppies where you want her to? Well, no. If you're not careful, she may well pick the best bedroom and uh, invite herself in, in, in the place that you really don't want her to, to uh, uh, be a nuisance best thing to do is really to decide where you want her to have the litter of puppies and uh, make sure that uh, she knows about that uh, long before the actual event. Can sometimes you, it's a battle of wills, sometimes. I say, can you move her once um, the, the birth has actually started? You can, but it's better not to have to do that. Uh, I, if you did it straight away, as soon as it was pretty clear that that was where she was going to start, uh, where she wanted to start performing, then obviously you'd shift her into a, a more suitable place. It needs to be a, a quiet, dry place, warm, of course. What are the first signs 